Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker, and today we're talking to Dr. Vanessa Battle, who is the pastor of Newgate International Church in Duluth. And also, she is the author of Couture Revealed. We talked about Couture Revealed on previous shows. We're going to talk about it again today and some new and exciting things that um, Dr. Battle is doing. Amen. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here, and I just thank God that you allowed me to come. Okay, now, you have some roots in Troop County, so I want you to tell me what those are. Yeah, uh, my father's side of the family was from Troop County, and uh, after discovering that, with what I'm doing with the Keturah message and, and going into your family background, into your family history, it's important to know who you are and where you came from. So I was led to come here to Troop County to do one of my Keturah Reveal Healing of the Nations tours. Yes, and so then you took Keturah on a tour yes. to the to the states, in yes. the United States. How many states have you been to? I've been to all 50 states, uh, and it was called the Healing of the Nations Tour. Uh, we finished it in October 17. Yes, now tell me who Katura is and why she's important. Tell me uh, about her story. Katura is right there nestled in Genesis, the 25th chapter, verses one through six. And the Bible says there, uh, and Abraham again took a wife, and her name was Keturah. She's actually Abraham's, if you call the other two wives, she would be the third wife. Yes. And uh, a lot of people don't know about her. I found out about her about five or six years ago, and she married Abraham after Sarah had died, and Abraham and Keturah had six sons. Yes. And most folks don't know that, right? That's correct. And tell me about those six sons. Those six sons were, uh, of course, Abraham and, and Keturah children. And what happened with them, a lot of people don't know the story, and then they don't know what happened to them. Uh, actually, um, Abraham sent them away. I tell this joke, and it's kind of probably a bad one, but you know, <laughs> the uh, people look at our the patriarchs and people in the Bible, mm -hmm. You know, and put them on a, a, a pedestal, which they should be in a sense. But we've got to also understand that there are people just like us right. that were pressing and praying, God, show us what to do, how to do it every day, just like we pray. And so Abraham uh, sent these Keturah sons to the east, the Bible says, and it says, away from Isaac. And the story unfolds there how these young men uh, were probably angry, probably were full of hurt and pain and resentment. And the reason Abraham sent them away is because they were African Jews. Keturah was an African woman. Her name means incense, it means perfume. Yeah. So, you know, in the Bible times, they named you according to uh, what your call was or who you yes. were supposed to be. So I liken her name to the praisers, to the people that praise. So anyway, he sent those sons away. Uh, the Jews called the African and African-American people the ox. They said we're strong yes. like ox. So Abraham in his fear of him dying and uh, Keturah's sons being big strong guys, thought that they would maybe take over Isaac and take the land and the promise that was given to him. Yes. So he sent them away. All right, and so uh, the tours that you're doing are healing tours. Mm -hmm. Tell me how that works into the story of Keturah. Well, in the Keturah, I, I tell the uh, story about what would have happened to those young men, how they would have felt, just as I said, uh, the, the, the anger, the resentment, the hatred, but also the abandonment yes. and the fatherlessness. And so I bring that story 
uh, or even the, and even the orphan spirit. I bring that story forward to today because God looks at uh, life for us through generations. We might look at it at my life, my mother's life, my grandmother's life, maybe my children, maybe my grandchildren. God goes all the way back to the beginning and he looks through generations. Yes. So I liken that story of those young men being sent away. They were between the ages of 17 and 30 years old. Mm -hmm. I liken it to what's happening today in America, jail systems. We've got young African-American uh, men in jail from the ages of 17 to 30. I believe it's the same anger. It's the same hatred. I believe it's the mm -hmm. same bitterness, the resentment. I believe also in our families, it's the same fatherlessness, the abandonment. And as I tell the story and I talk about it, and I've done it, Wanda, with all types of cultures. Yes. I've done it with all Caucasian groups, uh, that's white groups. I've done it with all <laughs> African American groups, that's black groups. I've done it with mixtures. I've done it with the Spanish speaking community. Yes. Uh, I've even done it with all Scandinavians, and the results have been the same. People not only see the African and African American people being restored to our heritage, which is all the way back to Abraham, yes. but they see themselves being restored and, and being connected to our father Abraham as well. So it's bringing identity. Yes. It's being, bringing healing and restoration uh, to all types of people groups. Yes, and to each other, right? And absolutely. The, the it's bringing the races together, right? Absolutely, because there's been something that's been going on that a lot of people don't understand that I believe is a part of the clashing that we are seeing with the racial tension and all of that that's going on. We're dealing with people who don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. the African-American people. And if, if you'd hear the story from some of our elders, we were told that in the Bible, and I make a joke about this as well because my meetings are exciting, upbeat, are. <laughs> but at the same time, there's healing and deliverance that come. We were also to always told that we were connected to Ham in the Bible, okay? And he that was, we were out of the cursed lineage. Wow. Okay, yeah. so to hear this story about Keturah, uh -huh. all of a sudden identity comes to us. And please understand, I'm not trying to put one people group above another. Right. I'm just saying the Bible says Abraham is the father of many nations. Right. And so I'm saying here are the other nations that are connected to him and also the clash between the, the races or the cultures doesn't have to be there. We're all one. Yes. The, the, the big part of the story is I want us to come into uh, a place of reconciliation and healing with each other and other cultures and races uh, to say we're becoming the one new man yes. that God has called us all to be. Yes, and so um, how did you put all of that together. Where did you first hear about Keturah and that she was African? Well, I tell you, I'm glad you asked because this is another part of our heritage that we don't know. Um, I w I'm connected to uh, um, uh, something called Heartland Apostolic Prayer Network. It's right. a network of intercessors. We have a, a state leader in all 50 states, and I think now we're up to 80 nations, or I'm sorry, 100 nations, because we've got more nations with us. And I'm the multicultural affairs leader. Yes. Well, we have an annual meeting that we attend, and we were there one year. And you know, it's about 800 people there. And uh, what happened in this particular meeting, um, one of the rabbis got up and went to the mic and he said, I want all the African-Americans to come to the front. Well, my job as the multicultural affairs leader is to help from that point to now is to bring in other cultures. Right. And so I tell the story of how all three and a half of us got up and went to the front. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and people ask me, who's the half? I said, well, there's always a Caucasian or a white person that's got a curl right here yeah. that says, I'm black, I'm black, I'm African American <laughs> yeah. too. And we, you know, we, we will let them join in with yes. us. Anyway, the rabbi and his wife get on their knees 
in front of us and they do something called identification repentance. Identification repentance means I can stand on behalf of the people groups I represent and I can repent. So he was standing or actually kneeling on behalf of his ancestor, King David. Yes. And he says, well, uh, we want to repent to you for what our ancestor King David did to you. And I thought, oh, my God, yeah. King David. I said, oh, my God, I know there's a whole lot of people that's done stuff to the African <laughs> and African-American people, but King David, too. And he said, yes. He said, when they were moving the ark of the covenant in oh. Samuel, mm. And you remember there was a, spe a, a specific way you were supposed to do it. Right. Um, um, and anyway, the cart stumbled, the ox stumbled, and Uzzah stuck out his hand. And the Bible says God killed him. And so David got angry with God and said, I don't want the Ark of the Covenant to come to Jerusalem unless God breaks out, his anger breaks out, and kill all of us. So he says, let the Ark of the Covenant go to that African Obed-Edom's house oh. because it won't matter if another one of them dies. Oh, wow. And something in me wanted to just tore. Yeah. Broke. You're looking at a very broken woman. Yeah. But a good breaking. Uh-huh. And I thought, oh, my God, we never knew Obed-Edom was an African. And its name, if you study it out, it means slave. Wow. And so the, here it is in the Bible where the African people show up in the Bible with the Ark of the Covenant in our house for three months. Yes. And then after I thought about it, I said, well, wait a minute. Obed-Edom didn't make out too bad because the Ark of the Covenant, those three months in his house, everything was blessed. That's right. His house was blessed. His wife was blessed. His children was blessed. Even his plants and cattle was blessed because of God's presence there. Yes, and David went back and got that. Yes, he did. He found <laughs> out and said, hey, wait a minute. That ark is, is causing all kind of blessings to come. That's we right. We want the ark now. Yeah, <laughs> wow. And so um, that is interesting. And then I know like um, there are a few other incidences in the Bible where we now know that it was uh, Africans that maybe we hadn't known before. And mm -hmm. so that is great. Um, and I, you know, I got excited about the story of Keturah too, mm -hmm. because we had not known those kinds of mm -hmm. things. And I mean, it's just awesome. Amen. And it's, it's awesome for a people group to find out that they are um, not only spiritually mm -hmm. the sons of Abraham, right. that they are um, physically yes. in that bloodline. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that is very exciting. Okay, so um, how did the tour start? Okay, out of me being a part of the Heartland Apostolic Prayer Network, we realized this message needed to go to every state. Uh, and also, uh, someone had given me uh, a, a pair of slave chains. Yes. And those chains, um, uh, the way they're, and if you, you look on, you can go and Google me or YouTube me and you can see those slave chains. But anyway, it's a, the slave chains, one side is chains that they would put on one slave's neck. Then there's a lock and a key in the middle, a lock in the middle. Then on the second side is where you chain another uh, slave. So those slaves would go be chained together. They would also have shackles on their wrist and on their waist and on their feet. Well, somebody gave me those yes. and they gave me the key to those. And after prayer, the key, to the, the key that's right, <laughs> that's to be right. able to unlock it. Yes. And what God began to speak to me was that this is what America is under, the power of slavery. Mm. And so he com commissioned me and my leaders agreed uh, through HAPN. I'm also connected to the generals with Cindy Jacobs. Yes. I'm her African-American coordinator for the nation and the nations. So um, we were in agreement with her and Apostle John Benefield for me to go to the 50 states, every state, and break the power of slavery. Teach the Keturah message, which brought revelation, which brought identity, brought restoration, then to 
break those the, the power of slavery, which is a spirit to break that from off of every state. Yes, I know you've seen some really exciting things when you've gone on that tour. Can you just relate to us um, one or two incidences where it was just so very powerful? Yeah, I have tons of stories. I know you do. Um, and a part of those tours, I got to go through America and to see some of the uh, main places or uh, historic sites where different things happen. But let me tell you a story, uh, two, two stories. One was uh, a lady up in uh, Minnesota. I was at this church, it was all Caucasian, white people at the church <laughs> and they were all about 70, 65, 70 years old and above. Yes. Okay, so they oh, came yeah. in on rollers, they came in oh, wheelchairs, yeah. they came and I thought, okay God, this is gonna be interesting. At the end of my message when I when I broke the change, this eighty year old Caucasian lady, white lady, yeah. came to me and said and she was crying and she said, I have been for all of my life, we were taught to hate you. Mm. And she said, when I got saved, I knew better. Right. She said, but there, it was so ingrained in me, I didn't know what to do. And I would just pray and cry to God mm. and ask him, God, I, I know I can't keep living like this. This is wrong. So she said, but when you broke those chains, she said, deliverance came to me wow. and I can love you now. Yes. And she held on to me, hugged me, kissed me and just cried. So that was really powerful for me to see. Uh, number two was, I was I, we did an event in Atlanta where we hosted um, um, leaders from all over the, the world, 75 different nations wow. came. And there were two wow. African ladies there, yes. and I helped administrate the, the entire event. So I'm thinking, oh, those two African ladies, it's going to be fun to chit chat with them and talk to them um, and find out, you know, about, you know, maybe we can trade some recipes or something. Well, I noticed they were very cold toward me huh. and they didn't want to talk to me. And I thought, well, what's the problem between us? So later there were in a chain of events, God told me to go and to repent to them, which is identification, repentance. I went to their room and they did let me in. They were still ice cold. And I said, I want to repent to you for what the African-Americans have done to you when you come to America. Uh. I said, we've shunned you. Uh, we've been ashamed of you. We didn't want to identify with you. We didn't want to help mm. you because we didn't want people to identify us with people in a jungle. Yeah. Or an uneducated people. And I said, for that, we are so sorry. They're crying. I'm crying. They said to a couple of things. They said, number one, we want to repent to you because the African people told us, do not trust mm. the African American people. Wow. They'll lie to you. They'll cheat. They'll steal from you. And you see how the yeah. enemy had put that wedge. We're all crying now. But here was the main thing. They said to me, but you are our younger brother, Joseph, who we sold into slavery. And we repent to you, Joseph, for selling you into slavery, causing you to come to America and be slaves. And they said, Joseph, mm -hmm. talking to me, Joseph and to the African-American and African people, we release you now to go and become wealthy because you're yes. our brother that's supposed to gain wealth yes. and come back and save our nation. Yes. Woo! <clears throat> that was so powerful. Something broke over me. Yes. And some my eyes were open to the reality that slave that Africans had sold Africans. Right. And then now, but that repentance took place. So that gap was bridged and reconciliation and healing wow. came. Wow, it's awesome, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what an honor for the Lord to give you that vision and, and let you carry it to the nations and, and to all over the United States, but you've carried it to the nations through national leaders and those kinds of things. And, um, sometimes you think about, uh, boy, if I had to go to 50 states, that mm -hmm. would be very tiring and those kinds of things. And I'm, 
I'm sure it is in some mm -hmm. ways. But then when you get there and God does amazing yeah. things, I mean, it just re-energizes you. Mm -hmm. And um, you're able to keep on going and carrying that torch. And thank you for being so faithful to carry it all over the United States. You're, you're so welcome. I'm going to tell you, it was the grace of God. Yes. And what we're doing next is we're headed to the, 80 na the 100 nations plus. So we're, we're going to take this message throughout the nations of the world now, uh, as well as we're headed into mainstream African-American uh, and mainstream Caucasian and all multicultural churches in this nation. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so you've got the book, Couture Reveal. Yes. And we're going to put a picture of, of the book up on the screen. And mm -hmm. where can people go to purchase the book? Uh, they can go to my website, www dot newgate i n t l dot org that's www dot newgate i n t l dot org and you can go right there to the bookstore and you can get the book okay that's great now recently i've heard about and it was very recently when you said that you were going to come on the show uh the 2019 movement Mm -hmm. Tell me what that is. Well, that's uh, with uh, Dr. Joe Green, and he's actually um, the founder of that movement. And that movement is, is going through America as well. We are partnering on some things uh, that are called the Liberty Tours. And we will be going through the nation, uh, his movement, which is on his website, www.the2019movement. Dot com. You can go there and find out. He's bringing truth and a revelation around some of the issues around what's been happening to the African and African-American people. Yes. All right. And so why is it called the 2019 movement? Well, it's called that because of next year, which is 2019. Um, there's a, a movement that's taking place August 2019 will be the mark of the 400th year that the, the first slaves or African people came to uh, America. And so there's a great big movement around that uh, and there will be events throughout the year. Okay, and so there's there's an event coming up about that, right? Um, next year. Next year. What we're getting ready to do is called the Liberty Tours. Okay, tell me about the Liberty the Tours. The Liberty Tours is uh, Dr. Joe Green and myself partnering with his message uh, about 2019 and some of the things he's doing around reconciliation and restoration of the people group. And my message is uh, I'm bringing forth the Katura message uh, to bring again restoration, healing. The major piece with the um, Liberty Tours is to bring identity to a people group where identity has been stolen. The, one of the issues with the African and African American people is, you know, everybody's tried to name us. We've been called uh, Negro, colored people. We've been called black. Well, all of those names, there are reasons we've been called that. Personally, I don't care for black. Uh -huh. Because if you look that up, it's just the color. Uh -huh. It just says a color and a couple of other things. But if you say African American, that's the name I prefer because African connects me to a land and to a people. And American connects me to a nail. Right. So African gives me my history, gives me my identity. And in the past, a lot of people don't know this, African American people have been ashamed of that. So they didn't want to identify with Africa. Well, I got good news. Guess what? God wants us to identify <laughs> with Africa. That's why I believe this last name that we're being called African American is who we really are. We're connected to Africa because that's, in a sense, the motherland. Yes. And then we're here in America, and we're Americans. Yes. So I think that's very important, which, you know, if you study through that, it'll all go all the way back and then connect us to Keturah and connect us to our real motherland, which is Israel and uh, with the Jewish people. Something else I want to say about that, 
one of the things that we'll be doing with those tours is helping helping the African and African American people connect with their Jewish roots. Yes. Right now in mainstream African American and African churches, we don't have a connection uh, with the Jewish community or Jews, period. We don't understand the need for us to be connected with the Jews. So the teaching, the Liberty Tours, as well as the Couture Tours, will help us connect our identity with the Jews and with some of the cultural things that we are to be doing with our Jewish connection, which I feel like, and we've seen it, will bring another dimension. I don't yes. even wanna say level. It's a dimension or a realm of who we have called are called to be. And as I stated before, when I was talking about the lady that said, you're the Josephs and we release yes. you into who you're supposed to do, Isaiah 60 and 6 talks about Sheba, it talks about Ephah, talks about Midian coming to Jerusalem. And if you look those names up, those are some of the names of Keturah's sons. It talks about them coming to uh -huh. Jerusalem, coming to Israel, and it says they're coming with gold. Yes. They're coming with incense, but they're coming also with the word of God and the praises of our God. Yes. I believe that's a word for us to get in the African and African-American churches to see that, and I'm not saying other cultures are not, are not Josephs oh, yes. and are not connected to the Jews. I'm just bringing our portion forward. And I believe there's going to be, and we believe, a major transference of wealth. And the wealth to the African and African American people is to help the Jews make Aliyah back home. Oh, yes. That's so exciting. And you know, I just love hearing you explain these things for us. I mean, I think it, it'll just open up people's understanding and um, it's so rich and so deep and um, it and also open up people to research those things yes. more. And so it just reminds me of how God um, has put everything together mm -hmm. in such a rich way mm -hmm. and that when we connect, everything in the kingdom is ours, right? Amen. I mean, everything yes. that uh, was intended for each race mm -hmm. all belongs to us and the giftings that are placed within each other. It says that that's for the body of Christ. Absolutely. And so uh, we will share in the rich kingdom of God together. Absolutely. Thank you for coming all the way down from Duluth this morning <laughs> to be on the show. And I just want to thank you for watching you make the difference and to remind you that you truly do. So be who you are and know that God created you special and that what you have inside you is very valuable. We'll see you next week.